So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. I wonder whether you felt any different when you became a Christian. Perhaps you can remember a specific moment when you made a commitment to Christ. Perhaps you don't. Perhaps you're still not sure and you're wondering what deciding to be in Christ might be like. St Paul might tell us that everything has become new, but my experience is that change has been slow. Mine was not a dramatic story of overnight change, no miraculous release from habit and temperament. I'm probably a bit more patient than I was a decade ago, but I am daily reminded of the ways in which I fall short and thus regularly reminded of my need for forgiveness. Today, the fourth Sunday of Lent, we are left in no doubt about the call to repentance and the call to be reconciled with God. Everything has become new, says St Paul. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, he writes. And the Gospel reading for today is possibly the most well-known parable illustrating what it means to come to our senses, realise we have sinned and return to the Father God who loves us. Jesus tells a story and he tells it to the tax collectors and the sinners. He tells the story of redemption to those who came near to listen to him. In the previous chapter, we learn that Jesus has been invited to eat at the house of a prominent Pharisee. So was he still there? Were the people grumbling because a crowd had gathered, a crowd the Pharisees and the scribes disapproved of? Half the crowd around Jesus was all ears and the other was muttering about him. And so he launches into the story. One way this parable is often taught is this. We are invited to decide who we are in the story. Perhaps we are the parent and for those with difficult relationships with their children this Mothering Sunday, that can be a painful reflection. Maybe we're comfortable knowing we have the role of the feckless younger brother. And sometimes we can recognise in us a tendency towards older brotherishness. I wonder whether the Pharisees and scribes, the ones who had stuck to their rules, saw themselves reflected in the older brother. Thinking through where we are in the story helps us do more than just skip over familiar words. Some of the words are familiar because they form part of our liturgies. One of our post-communion prayers echoes this parable. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. The father sees us coming. The prodigal son was alone when he made his decision to return. We have Jesus sent into the world to show us the way. God, our father, did more than the father of the prodigal son, for God sends his son to find us. And in that finding is the call to repentance. We are called to repent not just today, not only in Lent, but in every part of the year, because we're called to recognise our own flawed humanity and to understand the gloriousness of the reconciliation we have in Christ. For we are forgiven and freely pardoned. There's nothing else. Dorothy L. Sayers, writer of detective stories and theologian, illustrates the points like this. She writes, Nobody has to sit about being humiliated in the outer office of God while God dispatches important business before consenting to issue a stamped official discharge accompanied by an, an improving lecture. Like the father of the prodigal son, God can see repentance coming a great way off and is there to meet it. And the repentance is the reconciliation. 
Uh, those words were written in 1941 as part of an essay examining forgiveness and war. I'm writing this only a couple of weeks after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and I have no way of knowing what casualties, acts of war and inhumanities will have happened by the time this is published. Our shock is far too new to think about collective repentance and forgiveness, perhaps because forgiveness doesn't free us from the consequences of actions. The prodigal son's return did not refill the family coffers after his squandering of his inheritance. Forgiveness from God does not take us out of tempting situations or improve us overnight or miraculously change the personality of someone that really annoys us. In fact, the humbling thing about asking for forgiveness, about making a confession, is how often we are confessing to the same failing again and again and again. So what of St Paul's words that in Christ all is new when we repeatedly fall flat on our faces over the same faults? All is new, indeed. Christ's resurrection is the beginning of the new creation, for now and not yet, in which we live and of which we are a part. Being a Christian today is about holding on to that hope. In Christ, says Paul, God was reconciling the world to himself. So therefore let us listen eagerly to the word of God, just as the tax collectors and the sinners did. Let us heed the call to repentance throughout these remaining weeks of Lent. Amen.